Now, Mike, you know, all of these are intriguing ideas, but what, and, and one could think that anyone who is observant would be able to say, oh, okay, revenge is a good, you know, it, it, it takes me some way to getting cooperation or making sure I'm, I'm not a doormat and things like that. Yeah. What makes you think that there is an evolutionary component? I mean, why do, you, you actually argue that this is part of our kind of neural wire. Right, right. Well, there's, there's a couple of lines of evidence to me that are, are really important. Um, one, one is the fact that you see these dynamics in every culture that has been known to, the, to observers, to human mm -hmm. observers, right? You, it, you would have a harder time finding a society of three-armed people than you would a society of people that don't know the concept of revenge, a, a, as used in the kind of ways I've tried to outline. So if we would say, well, maybe it's just cultural, right? You know, maybe some, we've got vengeful cultures and we have peacemaking cultures. Th that, that kind of argument falls apart when you realize there aren't any cultures that don't know revenge. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a convincing piece. I think also the fact that we see these kind of dynamics that work in non-human animals says, so says to me anyway that if, if you're a species that encounters these kind of social dilemmas, um, evolution may favor the development of these vengeful mechanisms as a possible solution to, to these kind of problems. Because groups that uh, use revenge fare better. Individuals who use revenge, okay. for sure, fare better. Okay. Um, and maybe groups. Um, and, then fi and then finally, to me, the, the brain evidence is, is also really interesting. Because uh, you know, if, if revenge were kind of this, this purview of the mentally, morally, spiritually depraved, you, you might think, well, if we, look, you know, if we look deep into the brains of these people, we'd, we'd find the, the, the desire for revenge coming out of some you know, very sick place, some very dark place. Instead, if, if you look at the brain of somebody who, um, and this is, you, this is it's amazing to me that you can even do this kind of science now. I mean, it, it's, it's such a great time to be a social scientist. Um, um, if, you, if you put somebody into an MRI, and put them in one of these economic games where somebody ends up harming them. And then you give this person the opportunity to harm in kind the person who's harmed them. The place where you see the brain activity going on that makes revenge interesting is in an area of the brain that scientists now recognize as the brain's pleasure system. Okay? It's, it's the Sweet revenge. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, it's, it's, it's even more nuanced than that because it's, a part of, it's the part of the brain that's active when somebody is pursuing a goal that they believe is going to lead to a reward. So it's not even like there's the, that, that what they're actually experiencing when they're plotting revenge is pleasure. What, they're, what they are is they're jonesing <laughs> for a, a fix. They see some reward out there. Um, that looks like there's, that it's going to be really satisfying if they can just make it happen. And it's the same pattern of activation you see in the brain of somebody who's hungry, who's just about to be given a, 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 a meal, or in fact, tr truly the, a drug addict who's thinking about the drugs they like to use, or uh, somebody who's about to have, a, have a, an interaction, you know, a social interaction with someone they really enjoy talking to. And, and what happens after they exact the revenge. Yeah, then, then what you, you see is um, a real pleasurable sensation um, that doesn't last for a, a terribly long time. But um, there is an exhilaration when, when people see uh, en their enemies justly punished. Yeah. Suffer. Suffer, right? And I think it. I mean, the the, the part of this that is a uh, is, I mean, there there is a there is a an insight about human nature that is uncomfortable here. You know, that we're all sadists, basically. <laughs> well, well, that that the that the that the brain that that the brains, the the very normal, typically developing brain structures, have been co-opted, in my view, by natural selection, to to motivate us to do social things that were in our best interests as our species was evolving. Just a couple of questions about uh, revenge, and then we're going to go to forgiveness. Yeah. Um, but 
at what point does um, the instinct for kind of evening the score become destructive? You have a story oh, okay. in here about um, Marvin Hemeyer and his killdozer. Yeah. I mean, would you, <laughs> it, 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 this sounded kind of sick to oh, me sure. when I read about it. So is that just natural behavior or is it kind of sickness? So should I? Is yeah, there a tipping point? Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll lay the, lay the story yeah. out a little bit. This, right. was, this was a man um, in a little town called Granby, Colorado who uh, had had some disputes with his neighbors. Um, he had a muffler repair shop, and his neighbors across the way had a concrete plant, and he was having some zoning disputes with them, some property use issue disputes. So they took it to the town council, and basically he, he lost. He put a lot of money into trying to fight these battles, and you know, every time he tried to make something happen that would be good for his his case, he just sort of lost more ground. And this was a guy everyone said was a really nice guy. I mean, he had lots of friends and he had, had lots of uh, activities he enjoyed engaging in, in the community. But he, he, he just got lost more and more ground the more he fought City Hall, basically. Um, so he got morose and uh, started to brood. And over the course of about a year, without anyone, any of his friends knowing, he took a 53-ton bulldozer and armor plated it with a foot of concrete and uh, steel plates on either side of this concrete and mounted three rifles to the outside of it and put two c cameras on the outsides uh, so he could, he could watch what was going on from the inside. And then one day he dropped a, a, a lid on top of it and took this tractor out into the streets of Granby, Colorado and did a couple of million dollars worth of damage and ultimately took, you know, put a pistol to his own head and took his own life. And that's the only way they, he was ever stopped. Um, he didn't kill anyone. He did not kill anyone. Except himself. But, he, but all of the buildings that he destroyed, he's destroyed something like nine buildings, were all linked in some way to people who he felt had done him an injustice. So you ask yourself, that seems a little excessive, doesn't it? I mean, how, how, so, so how, what's, you know, what's normal about that, right? And, and, and I think there's, that, that's, that's a very interesting example of a place where you take, a, you take a, a natural human capability and you overlay it on some uh, other liabilities, um, drug use, alcohol use, mental disorder, uh, severe social rejection. And then you get the things that we read about in the newspaper or hear about on, on NPR. Um, chill, you know, kids who go into shopping malls with, with guns and things like that. So it has the look of, it has the smell of depravity to it, you know? And that's what's confusing. But, but what, I think is, what I think is happening there is you're, we're getting normal human traits overlaid on uh, other, other defects. Okay. One qu question, just briefly. If if revenge is genetic, are you saying, or or you know, it, the result of evolution, yeah. are you saying that rape and murder, especially in the service of you know, um, evening the score, making a point, as happens, you know, between <laughs> tribes yeah. in Africa, <clears throat> other places, are you saying that these are mandated moral? Um, responses simply because they're part of our wiring. Well, I, they certainly aren't moral. I mean, the, 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 my, you know, my morality, and I hope all of our morality, can, can exist outside of what we know to be the givens of human nature, right? I mean, we can, we can, we can take moral positions um, that don't emerge from the facts, but it's, it's nice to know, I think it's nice to know the facts when you're trying to determine what your morals are. I mean, it's nice to know what the givens are. So you're you saying they're not, it's about. not deterministic. It's not like you have to do these things. No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's absolutely not. That's, and that's, certain, that's not the way that, that these mechanisms work. Um, with, 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 I mean, we'll take rape and murder. I mean, these, these, are, these are not um, mandated in any sense by our genes, nor is revenge for that matter. I mean, what you get, the, the, the way I think this kind of thing works is n natural selection builds stuff, right? It builds mechanisms that take in information, right? And that information then gets modified and, and, and operated on and leads to certain proclivities, right? 
So uh, I have a taste for 